Good afternoon, my name is Monaisha Sims. Prosecutor Kim Worthy, graduate of the University of Michigan and Notre Dame Law School. She started her career as a baby prosecutor in Wayne County in the 1980s. Citizens of Wayne County had no idea they were getting a gift that would keep on giving. By the 1990s, she was a household name in the city of Detroit for her prosecution of the beating death of an African-American man named Malice Green by police officers. As both the judge of Wayne County and the first African-American woman prosecutor of Wayne County, no one is above the law under her watch. Not police officers, politicians, the powerful, or the wealthy. In some circles, she is known as the toughest woman in Detroit. In other circles, little black and brown girls dream of growing up being a little Kim Worthy, myself included. In 2009, over 11,000 rape kits in the city of Detroit were discovered untested in a warehouse. These rape kits were left in a dark room on a shelf forgotten about, some that date back 20 years ago. Until Prosecutor Worthy said, not under my watch. Since then, Prosecutor Worthy has discovered, since Prosecutor Worthy has discovered these untest, untested rape kits, she has made it her mission to raise money in order to get all of the rape kits tested to move forward with prosecution. Prosecutor Worthy has dedicated her entire career to serving and protecting the citizens of Wayne County. On behalf of the Criminal Justice Law Section of the American Bar Association, I have the absolute pleasure to present the Norm Maylene Minister of Justice Award to Prosecutor Kim Worthy. I want to thank the American Bar Association for this award and this recognition. And due to my participation on quite a few of the Standards Committee, I have met a lot of you and fought with a lot of you <laughs> inside the room when we're trying to write these standards and go over them. But we always leave it in the room, though. I was a, a judge for many years, and I know how to leave it in the courtroom and not take it on. We can go out to dinner together. I also want to thank, and this is um, very heartfelt, not that the other one wasn't, um, the men and women of the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office who work tirelessly every day with little resources, who have more cases per prosecutor than any place else in the country, and we are the lowest funded prosecutor's office in the country. And so the work that we do and the work that we try to do, always in earnest, uh, goes to the successes and, and some failures of those men and women. Uh, and when, when I say some failures, I mean we want to do more on each case than we can do oftentimes and hopefully, and things are getting better in Wayne County, and I'm happy about that. I've always, always wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, there were no lawyers in my family. I don't know where this desire came from. I cannot articulate why. But what I can articulate is why I became a prosecutor, why I remained a prosecutor, and why I came back to the profession. I never wanted to be a prosecutor. That's not something you learn in law school, at least in that time. I never intended on being one, and especially because I was from a city were at the time, it's changing now, it was primarily citizens of color. I believed what many still believe today, that all prosecutors care about are getting convictions and putting people behind bars, that we're not for any type of criminal reform, that we don't care about prosecuting people of color, and that it's done at all costs. I will go to my grave try to, trying to change that narrative. Let me just say this, since I have limited time, because I could speak forever and ever about that issue. I, about true criminal justice reform, not the soundbite, feel-good things that we see on criminal justice reform, and not the reform that sometimes spotted today, but the true, true reform. Being a prosecutor and knowing that you're a gatekeeper of the criminal justice system means something to me. Realizing that the proper intake and screening procedures are had means something to me. That not charging a case that everybody in the universe seemingly wants charged that shouldn't be charged, shouldn't be charged, and that means something to me. 
that the fading voices of survivors and victims in today's world mean something to me, and they should not be crushed at all or forgotten when we make this reform. That alternatives to prosecution mean something to me, and it doesn't mean that the prosecutor is somehow not tough on crime. And this is something we've been doing since the late 90s and the early 2000s. That taking a position that all untested rape kits should be tested to bring justice to all forgotten victims and go back 35 years now is important. But what's always important, and one of the reasons why that position should be taken by prosecutors, is that somehow in there you may find people that were unjustly convicted because there was a rape kit that wasn't tested. Hasn't happened in Wayne County yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. I also want to tell you that it means something that when you stick to your guns because it's found that there's a 10% error rate in all testing in Wayne County on firearms cases, and people have been convicted on them, and prosecutors stood before juries relying on that evidence, it means something when you want to take a look at all of those cases, thousands of those cases in your office, and everybody laughs at you for that, except for, of course, the defense bar. It also means something when we found a very small mistake in the analyzing of our drug alcohol in our, in our property room, in our, in our crime lab in the state. So minuscule that no one wanted to talk about it, but I thought it was important to mention that. And then your colleagues talk about you. That also means something, and this is particularly sensitive to us in Wayne County and in the state of Michigan, that the juvenile life or parole cases that are gut-wrenching, that are labor-intensive, that are very serious and very scary, and it's a big undertaking that I know most of you in this room are involved in, but that most prosecutors do not, oh, some prosecutors do not take that lightly. And we were doing this work in our states way before the Supreme Court said we had to. We're currently facing in Michigan the race to age statute because we have a lot of cases in Michigan because our, they were convicted when they were adults legally at age 17. And there's a big initiative in our state, a big push for raise the age, which I am a proponent of. Not others, but I step outside of what my organization said, but I'm a proponent of. And the only thing that's keeping it back in Michigan is because of the cost that it's going to be, and hopefully we can get through that, and we could raise the age to 18 in Michigan. But these cases are very, very hard and very rough, and we spend a lot of time and will continue to do so. But what I'm asking you to do as a body here today, what I'm asking you to do is just for a moment, and I'm not taking cases, I'm not talking about cases that where the, the defendant is factually innocent. I'm not talking about the lower level drug cases. I'm not talking about drug cases at all. I'm talking about the crimes that are traditionally victim. When we talk about reform, and we, when we move forward with reform, that we at least think about, whether you want to or not, think about that person that has a murdered family member, or the woman that was raped, or the grandmother that was abused, or the child that was abused, or the woman that was a victim of domestic violence. Think about that for a moment as we go along with reform and not think of them as nameless, faceless people that we're going to push aside and not think about because we're trying to get this reform over here. I'm asking you just to think about it. You may discard it if you want to, but think about the real living human survivors that are here that this reform is important to as well, that they're not forgotten. I also want to mention that addressing and prosecuting police shootings means something to me. And we've been doing it in Wayne County, as you heard, since the early 1990s, before there was all this video. And I'm glad it's here. This is not a new issue, as all of you know. But I'm thinking about that as we take a look at, and, and I'm involved in a national effort to try to get some real life reform. That's an area that's some, some real reform across this country. And as you can imagine, it's not embraced, embraced by a lot of prosecutors that you may meet. Why do I mention all this? Because all of this is important, especially when you're talking about the role of the prosecutor who is the gatekeeper. I'm asking you, when you look at criminal justice reform, and we all should, that when you look at reentry programs, I'm just going to give you one example, one more example, that it's real reentry, not the joke that it was in my state. That when we pour this money into it, and we pour this money into this reform, and we make this reform, that we look at these reforms and make sure that they are enacted the way they should be enacted to really help the people we're trying to help. All of this information is relevant, it's necessary, it can be unpopular for prosecutors, but it's highly, highly necessary if we're ever going to have true justice for everybody in this country. You can imagine, and you probably, but I will tell you that prosecutors of color that run large offices, especially in large jurisdictions, may have a different view, and we do have a different view on some of these issues than our counterparts. 
And we have to embrace that, and we have to coexist. So I also want to mention that I think it's very, very important, which is why I asked the question of the esteemed gentleman that was here from the White House Counsel's Office, that prosecutors be brought to the table when you're talking about these reforms. I know there's, there are new efforts to make that happen now, but that hasn't always been the case. You must bring the gatekeepers to the table if there's ever going to be real reform. And the ones that don't want to come to the table after they're invited, shame on them and they should be outed. I know this sounds trite, but I really, really believe, and it sounds cliche, but I really, really believe that true justice and proper justice can come to the United States of America. I believe this. And as an ex prosecutor from Kentucky once said, and I'm going to quote her with, this, with my own embellishments, the American system of justice is the most perfect, imperfect system that there is. The problem is that there are imperfect, flawed human beings that make it up and exist in every role. We need to get away from re reform rhetoric and get to the truth. We need to stop inflating stats and facts to make points and creating frictions that may be valid, but they're not going to carry the water. How do you get to the truth if you're not going to be honest about what the problem is? We need to all look at ourselves as cogs in the wheel of justice and hold ourselves accountable, even if the press and everyone else gets it wrong. We need to resource the people in the system so that we can get it right. And yes, I'm talking about prosecutors. If you really want it to be right, just and fair, and you want to blame prosecutors sometimes, and the global you, for, for the problems that there are, you need to resource the people that can help you fix it. We can do this. We can, it can be done right. We can do this together. We can coexist, and we can get it right. But both the victims and the accused. Because isn't that why we are all lawyers? Thank you very much.